Welcome to Madame After Midnight. This is a podcast where we talk about life and its many pursuits of sustainable happiness. I'm your host, Madame Donut. Now, just like many fun things in life, I come with a warning. I often talk about things that make me hungry or horny, or both. You know, usually it's about food or something that I like to put in my mouth. <laughs> but tonight, we're going to be talking about beautiful art or things you know, things that we like to look at or hold or rolling around dirty and sweaty on the ground and or handcuffs. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, before you get scared um, <laughs> or my guest gets scared and runs away, uh, please welcome my guest tonight, Jake Bunnell. Thank you. Yay. How was your day today? Very good. Good, good. So nobody got in trouble today, right? Uh, well, that not, much, not, not much. Not much. Okay, just, yeah. en- just enough. Just enough. Yeah. True. <laughs> so, so okay. For for most everybody, if they don't know Jake, you're you're an artist. You're a sculptor. Right. There's a little bit of background on. We're going to talk about that, and and you are also a, a, an instructor in jujitsu. Yeah, martial artist, right? And recently joined um, the academy. Yeah, Police Maui Police Department. Yes, Maui Police Department. Because officially you're now major in the Major change. Well, I'm going through uh, some major changes as well, so I wanted to talk about that. Um, so, sculpting. want to yeah. start with that. Because when I first met you, first of all, when I first, um, I guess, realized that you're around, <laughs> 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 it was mostly a picture of your hand that I kept looking at. Like <laughs> It was during the pandemic, um, you were buying donuts from me and I would just see a picture or a, you know Instagram, a post of Instagram story or something. My yep. hood, and then I started following you and, and I didn't realize you were an artist which I mean I'm a creative myself so just generally I'm drawn to yeah you kind of exactly so. draw to each other or something yeah. like, right? being a creative person yes. is a strange thing and yes. like there's not I mean I didn't have a rule book like yeah. nobody said this is who you are and this yeah. is how to live like yeah. I just knew I liked making things you know yeah. and so anytime I had an opportunity I wanted to make something I with my hands yeah um, I wasn't necessarily a good painter I couldn't really draw I can draw I can draw mm-hmm. but I knew that I could make something quick with my hands and I could I would have an idea in my mind and I'd be like okay take some clay I started with clay mm-hmm. actually play-doh honestly I mm-hmm. would make things with play-doh when I was I don't know that big you know um, and then clay and then next was you know going into fine metals like silver and gold and bronze and and then I, I did some glass blowing and because originally I'm from Seattle and um, Chihuly's huge in Seattle you know I mean have you ever heard of Dale Chihuly he's like one of the biggest glass artists in the world and he was based out of Seattle um, he had an institute there and so me and buddies were like, okay, let's let's go up to a school that costs you know thousands of dollars to go to a year, and we're kids that don't have money. Yeah. Let's just go and see if we could talk to somebody. And we showed up, and it was a retreat for honestly, it's a retreat for people that have a lot of money that can send someone to, to go to this glass school. But yeah. so said close. Uh, we moved the gate and drove past. Happened to How get. Old were you? Uh, I was in high school. Okay. That's when you thought you can not, you yeah. didn't have to abide by that, the law. Exactly rules. right. Yeah. We drove all the way past, and there's a guy shooting a bow, and we go up and start talking to him, and um, he is like another world-renowned glass artist, and he's mm. like, "Oh, you guys are interested." And he took us into the shop. He showed us all around. He started explaining everything to us. Um, at how to build a kiln, how to build a furnace. Yeah. We go back and do that and never go back to that place again. But we did it ourselves instead. But we huh. were like, oh, let's, we wanted to go from to this place. From what you learned from that G- Yeah, way. yeah. And, you know, we looked up other stuff, but we, yeah. we learned at that point, okay. And that's what kind, that, that's how I am. It's like uh, being an artist, you're a problem solver. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Like for me, being an artist, it's, okay, I've got an image in my mind. How do I get it here? 
yeah. out of a piece of wood. I got to cut here, cut here, carve it out, and there it is. Or, you know, if it's clay or something or wax, I build it up, and there it is. I've solved that problem, you know, so. So you were saying you're not really actually technical savvy, but you're more structural savvy. Oh, right, about uh, computers and yeah. things. Yeah, but the great. structure in general, you're more savvy yeah. when it comes to something that you get in touch. You know? Yeah, I think I'm very visual. You're you very know, visual. like I, and I, tactile, of course. Yeah, right. Um, you know, I can, I can see something in my head mm. and then make it. Yeah. So why sculpting versus? You were saying you weren't versus like a particular. Versus two. Area. I don't yeah. know. It was in. It's in the, your space. It's something that I can hold yeah. and I can look around and yeah. I can see the whole thing, and that that was uh, that's where I gravitated. I mean, I took photography classes. Mm -hmm. I took drawing and painting. But I really enjoyed making something in your space that you could manipulate all the way around. And yeah. yeah. What's your favorite medium to sculpt with? I mean, I know uh, that honestly, you work with wood. But yeah, I, um, I like most subtractive mediums. So what that means is something that you take the material away. Yeah. So you actually carve it away. You start with a block of any stone is great too yeah. wood whatever you take it away and carve it away that that's kind of what I've always and even when I was learning how um, to do art three-dimensional work say I, st I would start with we'd, we'd have a block of clay in a bag I don't know if you've ever taken like ceramic class or something mm. you get a 20 pound 25 pound block of clay in a bag you start with that and people will like pull off little chunks and build things, right? Yeah. Make a little pot or something. Yeah. I would start with a chunk and I'd take the my tool thing. and just carve it away. And then, and then of course you can add to it. Clay allows yeah. you to build back up, but I always found that I would start subtracting it. And yeah, interesting. yeah and, but that lends itself to carving a tree or yeah. carving a block of marble because you can take it away, but you can't Marble, put it back. Marble, how do you freaking work with that? I'm just it's, it's, they're all really similar tools, just a little different. So marble, like I use, say, a saw. You know what a saw, like mm. when you're carving wood, you use yeah. a saw. Yeah. Well, you use a stone saw. So it's just a saw that has different, different a blade. different blade, yeah. basically. I mean, yeah. so you can get more specific with different tools, but basically that's it. You're just using a saw that's specifically meant to cut yeah. marble. Yeah. So it might have dar um, diamond dust or, you know, electroplated. Huh. It's, you know, a different, a different blade. Yeah. But it cuts. It's a yeah. saw, really. Yeah. So, I mean, since in high school, that's when you kind of... That's really when I started to, yeah, kind of focus on that. Yeah. Um, but how did you know that you can make a living off... Or were you able no, to? No, I had no idea. I, I, I had no idea. And at that point, you know... I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't. My parents are amazing, but they ne they weren't like you're going to go do this yeah. or you can go be this or it was just go to school and maybe after you can go to college. I don't know what you're going to do, but yeah. you know. And there was so no pressure. I come there was from, no pressure. See, I'm Asian, so usually we there's all pressure, have right? So you much need to be pressure. a nurse. Fuck it. Oh my God, exactly. When my mom said, well, maybe you can be a nurse or you can go to the States. This was back in the Philippines. And I said to her, mm, nope, just to be different. Every girl I know here wants to be a nurse and I'll go to the States in my own way, which I did. Singing, which is one of the things she said not to do. But um, I secretly joined a band. Nice. And I kept it a secret that I joined the band until we had to be on TV. Like but this you was got back to in the TV, phone. though. Yeah, but in high school, I wasn't allowed to go after my interest, so I, I snuck out most of the time. But and you got to make it happen. I mean, yeah. that's what it is. Yeah, and then I worked on a cruise ship, and then I, j <laughs> I can say that now because I'm here illegally, and I jumped ship and just stayed in the country. So I oh, told her, see, I told wow, you I'm wow, going to come wow. to the States my own way. So anyways, it was just one of my crazy ways thinking of, like, I could just break the rules. So was that your intention did you know like i'm gonna work on the cruise ship and no not at no, all no i made or the decision just, i made the decision like drunk that morning ah uh, so it was probably about three four o'clock in the morning we we're drinking you know the bars are already closed on a yeah cruise yeah ship. yeah and um let's not go back yeah 
Yeah. Right. But 18, it was like such an adventure. It, that, that's, that's pretty wild. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, just to be not a nurse, I sang on a cruise ship and did it my way. But but my mom did not agree with it. And it's back to you. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. Like, I love that like you had parents that were supportive of like. Just, Always supportive. Yeah. But it wasn't ever like you're going to go do this or that. It was kind of on me, and I didn't know that I was going to make it, you know? Yeah. Like, I, I was like, well, I want to take more courses. How do I? Mm -hmm. So then I went to community college, and I took every kind of art course I could come across. I, yeah. Like, I was taking sculpture. I was taking metal smithing. Mm -hmm. I took jewelry. I took art history because I thought, well, I should, you know, do that. Yeah. And, and that would check a box for an academic, you know? And yeah which I was terrible at all my academics. Yeah. I mean, and I'm not proud of that, but I'm just, uh, I wasn't good at it. I couldn't focus. I didn't have any real desire to be good at it. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I wanted to spend time making yeah. art and yeah. every free time I had, that's pretty much what I did. Yeah. Creatives, it's not like, I hate it when they'd say, oh, you're not very intelligent because intelligence it's really, different. it's just different. different. It's different. You know, it's, not everybody can think creatively. It's, uh, yeah, the, the whole thing with not knowing. Like, I didn't, like, again, I, I didn't have a guidebook. I didn't yeah. know. Like, I thought everybody's the same, and they all, you know, but obviously being creative, you are different, and you yeah. think different. Yeah. Um, I met my wife around that time in college. Is she an artist? Well? She's not. Oh. No, no, no. She's the opposite. She's intellectual. Yeah. She's very smart. Yeah. And like grades came easy like she yeah. partied in school yeah. and got straight A's yeah. <laughs> and part and that's that's who and m like my kids are half and half yeah. like my daughter is more like I mean they're both artistic mm -hmm. but my daughter is more like how I was and my son is more like how she was like but he's a little he's definitely artistic and he likes to draw and um um but it's like my wife and I are very different. She's that same, you know, she's like excels in, you know, the studies, the academics. Yeah. And I like to me, I didn't know that like yeah. that. I didn't know that I was so different, you know, and, and making art, like looking at that. And um, if we jump ahead just for a sec yeah. anyways, like selling art and meeting people that would buy my art, they'd be like, I don't understand how you make this. and. Mm. And that was always like, what do you mean? I mean, mm -hmm. I just make it. It's easy. Yeah. Like, I don't even have to think about it. Yeah. I just make it. Yeah. And uh, to me, it's easy. And, yeah. you know, I guess everybody else is different. And I, I think <laughs> that everybody's got their own genius, right? And that's just what comes so naturally. And I never forward. thought of it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Like, to me, I just thought I'm just who I am. And yeah. that's what I like to do. I yeah. like to make things. When did you start making art? for like to make money to make money so when I was in Seattle um, I was um, I was really getting into making small sculpture otherwise known as jewelry <laughs> okay. I would make it a sculpture like I loved casting and I yeah. would make my rings I would carve them out of wax and cast these little sculptures that were rings I don't even I, I have this because this is like jujitsu and it's you know I can take it oh. off it doesn't it's you know it's the silicone no 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 it's silicone it's your real wedding ring. this is what I wear now I have you rings have that I've one. made and I've lost them and I have <laughs> I have many rings but the silicone yeah. for doing jujitsu yes. and, and working with my hands this is yeah. what I wear yeah. mostly um, but so I started making um, rings my mm. first probably the first thing I sold was a um, a set of wedding rings, platinum. I cast mm. platinum rings mm. for. Um, it was a coworker. Yeah. I was working in a restaurant part time, yeah. and uh, he was like, "Can you make me some rings? I'm gonna propose." I was like, "Yeah." yeah. And then I'd never cast platinum before, and mm -hmm. I, like since I, I I've worked with a lot of professional jewelers who that's what they do, and they're like you cast platinum, that's the hardest thing in the world. And you've got to be like, everything's got to be perfect. And I'm like, well, I just, I took my centrifuge, which is how you cast, it's this big machine. Mm -hmm. And I bought a big oversized spring to make it go faster. Cause it had to go in faster. And Cause it will set faster? It, is that what it is? Um, 
platinum melts at a higher temperature, so you've got to get it hotter, mm -hmm. and you've got to get it into the mold faster. Yeah. And so I, I took apart my centrifuge, and I bought this big spring, and I put it in, and I did it. Yeah. But again, it's problem solving, and yeah. making art a lot of times is problem solving. And yeah, so. love that. Um, Jewelry. Yeah, and I, I have all my equipment still. It's kind of collecting dust, mm. but... Uh, you know, one of these days it'll come out of the closet right. and I'll and I'll make some more jewelry. But uh, I kind of moved on to bigger sculpture. You know, it's like I always enjoyed the small stuff, but I wanted to make big things. Yeah. You know, um, so when we eventually moved to Maui, I've been here 23 years. Mm. Um, had an uncle here, Hanai uncle, Uncle Bruce, and um, he was. Originally, he moved here in the 60s as a school teacher. Mm -hmm. um, he was a school teacher at Lahaina Luna, but also was an aspiring artist and mm -hmm. worked at his craft and became a successful artist here and built his whole studio and compound out Kakaloa. So when we moved here, I went and started apprenticing with him. Like, mm -hmm. I would go finished sand his sculptures i would go learn the process i would also he had a gallery at his studio so i would see the process of selling art and mm -hmm. and doing that so i kind of got the behind the scenes there the business end of it a bit yeah. yeah and then he said well there's lots of opportunity here um for me my first opportunity was um a place called lahaina art society it's where the banyan tree is mm -hmm. it's a co-op i guess a nonprofit okay. co-op. So I started there and within I think two weeks I had sold a life-size sculpture right out of there. I was like, what's happening? Yeah. This is yeah. amazing. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Like thousands of dollars. Yeah. I was like, this what is could, happening? Yeah, this and then another work. one like yeah. that. So right away they were selling. I was like, what's that? This is amazing. Are there a lot of sculptures here in Maui? There I isn't feel like a lot. That's not there's not. I mean, there's a lot of there. There's quite a few 3D artists, so mm -hmm. like potters and things, yeah. but um, make uh, sculptors that are making large scale yeah, stuff. There isn't a ton. There's a handful. We all kind of know each other, right, right. you know. Um, there isn't a ton. Yeah, so, I actually don't know of anybody else but you. And it's hard. It's hard sledding. I mean, it's not easy, like. People can buy paintings and yeah. put them on their wall real easy, but when mm -hmm. you're buying something that's in your space and yeah. is there, they don't know even how to react to a sculpture half the time. You know, yeah. they're like, I don't know, I what like do I such do with an this? It's interesting medium because, like you said, it, it takes up space. It's in your space. Um, and just for somebody to have a sculpture of something in the middle of their house, it's like, you gotta have like a good space to show it off, and it's you giving it like it's a centerpiece all of a sudden you, you, you know? and that you which is what's beautiful about right. it right that's, that's a lot of commitment but it doesn't have to be it can be more simple mm. but it does feel that way right you know to to everybody it's like oh i don't know i mean i can't but really to me and i kind of got this when i was selling art and creating art is if you love it, you should have it. Yeah. Like, why not have something in your life that you love? Yeah. So you should have it. Why not? Like, that's that's what it came down to. Like, yeah. you love it, you should have it, yeah. and that's and that could be t for anything. You know. That's right. It's not much. Why of not? A, it's love not is that. not a hard sell. It's actually pretty easy. It's that's how most of us do anything, really, right? And for space, yeah. you know, even like I have a tiny house. I find space. If I find something that I love that I want to have in my house, well, guess what? That thing's getting out of there. Right. And I mean, you're into subtracting. There you go. Whatever you Exactly. Does. You subtract what you don't mm, like. That's and out of there, and this is going in. <laughs> yeah. You know, so. How long were you at? Because you're not at Four Seasons anymore. No, the Four time. Seasons was kind of a contract job, and mm. it's year to year is how it works there. Oh. And, um, you know, you're up for a new contract every year. Huh. And so I did it for about 17 years. That's I, a long a time. A long time. Oh. I took a break in the middle here and there. I might have taken two years off yeah. in there. 
but I think I was there for about 17 years. And um, do you have a lot of people who come and ask you for specific sculptures still? or? Um, I mean, I'm not really out there at this point, mm -hmm. um, so not so much. I mean, I get a phone call once in a while from the Four Seasons because yeah. I've done a lot of work for them over the years. I've done art pieces that are in their rooms. I've mm -hmm. done stuff. They have sort of a VIP program where they've bought small pieces for me and they give them to guests that spend over X amount of money. Like your art is an amenity? Exact, 100%. It's, yeah. in, it'll, it's in their room. It'll have a card. It's from me. It's signed by me. Wow. And you spend over X dollar. Yeah. 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 So I've done that. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, right now, I they they uh, they were hitting me up recently, and I said, there's just no way with yeah. my schedule right yeah. now that I can Speaking do it. Speaking of schedule, you... When one of the last times I talked to you about jujitsu, you said you were going to quit teaching, but then I Not see you're teaching. Not quit, uh, you know, ta yeah, take a break. Okay, so but you're teaching again? Um, a little bit here and there, here and there. I was teaching five days a week for a number of years, yeah. um, and it was morning, so I'd be teaching um, for about two hours a day every morning. Mm -hmm. um, and that's been hard to give up because yeah. I love jujitsu. Yeah. And how'd you get it, into that? <clears throat> So you weren't always in martial no, arts. No, no. Um, martial arts for me came kind of late in life. I was in my late 20s, and it really came out of, uh, I don't want to say fear, but maybe being bullied somewhat. Mm -hmm. I had a landlord that was kind of a bully, and um, it just, I felt like I wasn't, I wasn't, um, I wasn't being pushed around necessarily, but I didn't know what would happen right. if he pushed further. I knew um, I could get um, a restraining order and yeah. I could do that to protect my family. But if something were to happen, I didn't know what to do. I mean, I, sure, I could make a fist and I could punch him, but yeah. what that that might work for a second. But I don't I don't know. So I pursued martial arts at that point. Um, and you were in your early 20s? Uh, no, late. Late 20s. Late. I think I was 28. Oh, And gosh. I started going to Taekwondo classes. Yeah. And I was like, this is great. <laughs> um, you're kicking and punching things. <laughs> and it's such a great outlet. Really. You know, I, I had no idea. I've always liked doing physical things, and it was great. You'd get a good workout in, and there's coordination involved, mm -hmm. and there's... It's like a new family at the same mm -hmm. time. You're meeting these people and they bring you in with open arms. Mm -hmm. And pretty soon I'm traveling. We're going to compete. We competed on Oahu. We'd go in Taekwondo. Like, yeah, in Taekwondo. Like states are always on Oahu. Um, we'd go compete on the mainland. I competed. Um, I think I've competed in Texas, in Cleveland, in Vegas. Um, I mean, then, by then you had two kids. I had two kids yeah. as well, and they were getting into it as well. My son first, and yeah. then my daughter did as well. Um, but yeah, I was, uh, let's all do it as yeah. a family. Yeah. And my wife, she wasn't in, into it as much. I mean, she yeah. was happy we were doing it, mm -hmm. um, but she, she, um, she liked canoe paddling, and that mm -hmm. was her thing at yeah. the time. Um, and she, she doesn't like uh, close like uh -huh. you know That's what I mean contact, yeah, yeah confrontation yeah. like that yeah. and so that was never her thing I got her on the mat a few times but <laughs> reluctantly and it was because she lost a bet but <laughs> you know um, but so from Taekwondo it satisfied it, that art as well you know you've got to be creative mm -hmm. um, the physical side you're getting out that energy mm. I also felt like I was um, I was helping out as far as um, I guess my own mind that I could protect I was like okay now I know how to protect myself we can you know self-defense we were learning you know how to do different things and um, little did I know when someone gets close, you can't kick them anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to punch them mm -hmm. and it's hard to elbow them yeah. if they grab you. Yeah. And then if they grab you, you end up on the ground. And yeah. then what do you do? Yeah. Uh, so that was really when jujitsu came into my life. And, uh, and how old were you by then? Uh, I think I was maybe 32. Mm -hmm. 
somewhere around there, 32. I think I've been doing jujitsu. I started doing jujitsu partly while I was doing Taekwondo, and mm. then I went full time. Um, I think I was 32, so about 15 years of full time. Like when I say full time, I, I was like all in, like yeah. six days a week, sometimes seven days a week. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because now you teach, and mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. process, and well, I'm assuming you competed a good amount. Yeah, as well yeah, I've competed a lot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do still do, yeah. even. Oh, yeah. you still do. Yeah, I, I competed most recently on Oahu. Um, it was a super fight. It was against, um, I don't know if you've heard of uh, Kendall Grove. He was an MMA fighter. He fought in the UFC. He's a local boy from here. Yeah, Great know. guy. He's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Um, he'd be a cool guy to have on here. Yeah. I'm just saying. Uh, he's, yeah. a, he's a local guy. He's got his own gym down the street as well. But is he here on Maui? He's or? here on Maui. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but so he's born and raised from here. Yeah. He came up. And um, the UFC is a MMA, mm -hmm. martial arts organization. It's the biggest sort of in right. the United States. Yeah. So he fought for them a number of years ago now. Yeah. Um, and then off and on had gyms and whatnot. But so him and I had a jujitsu match on Oahu uh, last April. How'd you do? I did good. <laughs> I didn't win. I lost by two points. Oh. He got a takedown in the end, but we had a great match. Yes. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, and there was, everybody was watching, you know, yeah. it was real exciting. Yeah. And I used to train with Kendall years ago. Mm. Um, he's a great guy. I love him. So it was real fun to take that spotlight and be out there. And, yeah. and, and keep to, that yeah, going. Like, it's exciting having to do students see yeah. you do it and you preach it and you say, this is what you do. Mm -hmm. And then to go out and do it, you yeah. know, it, it means a lot. Yeah. So how long have you been teaching? So I'm um, teaching is one of those things that I feel like you always do on some level when you start to get a grasp of something. Mm -hmm. I was teaching in Taekwondo. I taught oh, kids class. Yeah. Um, I did once in a while teach the adult class, but I mostly would teach kids class on the weekends. Um, that was wild man that was adults no kids oh, adults kids. are easy ah. adults are easy they ah. do what you say yeah kids kids like how, how old um five on <laughs> up to teenagers yeah. you know and i mean it's like herding cats like <laughs> they just you got to keep their attention going yeah. like you got they do one thing you've got to do something else with the rest you can't can't have them standing on the side you know so mm -hmm. that was that was a major eye-opener so I taught there for a bit and then I started early because there's a belt system in jiu-jitsu mm -hmm. you start as a white belt and it's then, similar to judo uh, yeah there's a lot yeah. they all the martial arts for the most part have a belt system jiu-jitsu is very minimal judo is minimal as well mm -hmm. but so you have you come in as a white belt then there's a blue belt a purple brown and yeah. then black mm -hmm. and then there's degrees to all mm -hmm. those things yeah. and that makes it messy but like taekwondo there was there was a ton of belts yes. it was like there was yellow orange mm. green rainbows yeah purple blue brown yeah, brown with a stripe red yeah. it was like <laughs> there was so that. many it was yeah. wild but jujitsu is a lot more simplified but so i i actually um I, I was a blue belt and I started going and teaching classes at Taekwondo for the the mm. students and instructors that wanted to learn jujitsu. So I would go on the weekends and teach them jujitsu when I was I was just a blue belt. Yeah. But I I had a pretty good understanding of the basics yeah. and they wanted to learn. So yeah. then I started doing that. And kinda that I mean I think I did that for I don't know, probably a year or two while I was doing jujitsu. And then as you kind of progress through the belts, that is part of um, getting better in jujitsu is teaching. Like yeah. as you start teaching something, you start getting yeah. those nuances and yeah. you start you understanding it. Yeah, you, you take it apart and reassemble it yeah. and to explain it to somebody. Um, mm -hmm. So you do that more and as you kind of go up, um, I was, uh, my jujitsu story is interesting too because I received belts, all my belts I got from different instructors because I, for one reason or another, 
went to different spots. Like you did, went to different schools. My first instructor passed away. He know. died. So I got a blue belt, and then he was not around anymore. So mm -hmm. then we had an affiliation with, um, like, you say affiliation, but our his instructor is, like, here, right? There's levels to it, right? So mm -hmm. the guy that promoted him, we were under my instructor. He passed away. So we went to another school who's under the same yeah. instructor, right? Mm. You follow, sort yeah, of, yeah. right? Um, so then I went to that place because we were sort of sister schools, mm -hmm. yeah? Um, and then I got a purple belt from him, but I felt like, well, I wasn't really learning beyond that level. Mm -hmm. He was having me teach classes, and I'd be teaching white belts and blue belts class, but I was feeling like I'm, I'm shorting myself. Mm. I'm not really learning more. Mm -hmm. Like I, I'm showing them what I know, but I'm not getting any instruction, you know? Mm -hmm. So I kind of was feeling it out. That's when I started training with Kendall, Kendall Grove. And he's not an affiliate. No, mm -hmm. he was separate mm -hmm. and he was an MMA guy. And so his style was a little different. Yeah. And, but it, it was a whole new opportunity. Yeah. So, yeah. So back to the affiliates, like I, I just know, I took jujitsu in college for okay. PE for uh -huh. a few semesters. Oh, wow, wow. But uh, his schooling is more from judo. It's very uh -huh. Japanese. Right, right, right. So like maybe Japanese jujitsu. Yes. Which is different. Right. So the affiliation, do you mean the kind? No, of, I mean like, more just so Brazilian jiu-jitsu is what I do. Right. And it really comes from judo. Mm -hmm. Very different than Japanese jiu-jitsu. It's almost a totally different martial art. Yeah. Very different. Um, so affiliate wise, you have the Gracies who really, mm -hmm. um, they took judo, which was brought over from feudal Japan, yeah. um, immigrants went to Brazil and were working there and yeah. they knew judo. And so they started teaching people that. And then the Gracies who started Brazilian Jiu Jitsu took that and changed it and made Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. So they basically developed it um, so a weaker person could defend themselves using leverage and things, mm -hmm. locks and things. But so affiliate wise, you have the Gracies here. So they started it. Mm. Then anyone that they taught would be affiliated there. Right. So they branched out into different, there were different Gracies that went from yeah. there. My instructor who promoted me to black belts, um, he, his home academy is in Vegas. He's Brazilian. His mm. name's uh, Walter Vitale. So he is a Carlson Gracie affiliate. He comes down that lineage. Yeah. And then, so he's our affiliate here. We're an affiliate of his. So yeah. we're under him, yeah. right? Um, the school that I got my blue belt from was um, like a Hicks and Gracie affiliate if you went up the chain. So it was a different branch, yeah. but it's all jujitsu. It's yes. all Brazilian jujitsu. It's just, where did it come from? Like. Like you can link it yeah. down like, like three instructors. It's a big, exactly, yeah. family yeah. tree. That's, yeah. that's all it is. What's the major difference between Japanese jiu-jitsu? So I never studied Japanese jiu-jitsu, mm -hmm. but um, they don't do a lot of the same moves. They don't do a lot of the groundwork. It's what I understand there's a lot more of um, on the feet work. Yeah. So. There starts with that. Yeah, that whereas, I mean, all, fights start on the feet anyways yeah. you don't just but yeah. brazilian jiu-jitsu is mostly based around ground fighting being mm -hmm. on the ground and fighting from those positions and it's not based around striking there's no striking involved right. so it's all um submission holds mm -hmm. like how do you say uncle you know yeah but do you it's it's gi or gi does that so there's gi right. which is you know what a gi mm -hmm. a uniform or yeah, yeah dobok and mm -hmm. in korean that's what they call it they don't call it a gi it's a dobok that's the name of it or yeah. but it's a gi yeah okay um or there's no gi so no gi represents just me and you being in plain clothes yeah. and the gi would be like if you're wearing a jacket yeah. You know what I mean? Like you can grab the collar and I can use that to choke, yeah. you know, grab the sleeve and pull. I used to love that, like choking people. I mean, it's one of like, my favorite things to do, honestly. I mean, obviously <laughs> they know about the choke now. 
<laughs> uh, you know, it's it's pretty wild. And then going into the police, they're that, yeah, this that's is so much fun. I mean, that's considered deadly force. And I'm like, well, yeah. we do that every day. And they're like, yeah. no, you can't do that. And I'm like, oh. oh really? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's a big no-no. So but. speaking of, of the police, <laughs> well, you're, you're now with the, with the uh, Maui Police Department. In how training. In training. Yeah. How the heck did you decide to go into that? Ah. Like, that's why when I started talking to you, I was like, okay, art, sculpture, donuts, <laughs> um, uh, tattoos, uh, it, it's and a, pop. Like, yeah, it's a strange. Especially at the end of the later age. It, it's a, it's yeah. a strange, like, U-turn or yeah. right turn hard, you know? Yeah. Um, I, uh, I, I mean, there's a lot of ways of looking at it. For me, the artwork, I love making it and I always be an artist and I'll always mm -hmm. make art, but it became a job. It yeah. became so much of a job that I was, it was what I was doing all the time mm -hmm. and I had committed to it and I'm doing it and I'm doing mm -hmm. it. And physically at the same time, it was taking a toll on me as well. I, um, I was getting these weird aches and pains in places because I'm mm. using power tools in my yes. hands every yeah. day for it's, hours and hours. It's like a, you're just vibrating yeah. into my arms and I would get Here tingling you. sensations and things and so I I've been like thinking okay I need to do something I need to do something and having the martial arts and really the teaching and being involved with people and self defense and I um I have friends that are police and I just thought I could do that. I mm. I think I would be good at it, you mm. know. Um how does your family feel about it? I that was, uh, they're very supportive. Like okay. my wife's super supportive. Um, she's, she's happy I'm, if I'm happy, oh. you know? So that's, yes. that's awesome. And my kids are the same. Um, my son's a firefighter. Mm -hmm. So he was, I'm like, I gotta do something like that. I was, <laughs> when I saw him do that and when go I through the- When I grow up, I wanna be like I'm my like, son, well, I wanna wear a uniform. Yeah, I'm like, oh, that's awesome. No, but. You know, um, I don't feel old. I'm really old, yeah. but I don't feel We're old. We're not old. And I keep telling myself that. And no, I, I honestly, I don't feel that old. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's what it comes down to. Like being in the academy right now, I'm with like kids that are younger than my son. Yeah. And, you know, it goes pretty good. I do, it, do all right. Yeah. And like... Um, the academics, I'm doing better now than I've ever done because I have some focus on exactly. what I'm doing. Yeah. Like, I'm like, uh, I want to learn this. The interest, if you are interested in something, you can learn it. But 100%. Yeah, yeah. But as an adult, like, I always feel, even recently, I've, I've cooked all of my life, but then I got into baking and pastry, and I kind of didn't really cook savory as much, but I'm learning faster again mm -hmm. doing something new you're I mean, again, interested in yeah, and something so you like to do and yeah before it's like oh i don't want to cut meat or whatever you know but now it's like it's so much fun and i feel like my progress is kind of relearning how to cook differently is so much faster yeah. just your like, savory donuts are my favorite my yeah oh my goodness Hello. that ham cheesy oh yeah. I, when i first started Donut Dynamite, obviously they're all sweet donuts. And then one day the bacon maple donut, I oh, had the that's base. that's one of my so favorites too. Yeah, so mm. before glazing it and topping it, I was like, I'll just put cheese on it. And I was like, that's fucking good. So I was like, well, why not make the, the cheese like the glaze and just make a ham and cheese, which is classic. Can't go wrong. So, yeah. but You know one that you need to do, though. Not that um, a nice apple with with sharp cheddar. Apple mm. and cheddar is, yeah. So I actually make, well, not all the time, but I do make an apple pie with, with the cheddar. Oh, that is, so my grandpa yeah. was into that. And, yeah, oh, I think man, that's a that classic so southern good. twist to apple pie. That's really good. I love sweet and savory, even because, you know, you've had my donuts. They're not cloyingly sweet. Right. And that, I think sometimes people don't think about that just because it's They're dessert. The best. They're the best. Thank you so They're much. the best. Thank you They're so, so good. Much. They're so creative and they're so I, good. I do. The flavor and the colors and everything Thank you. Like, mm. it's funny because I never really thought I was a decorator but once I started making my donuts and I realized well it would be the service to the donuts that I worked so hard in making it delicious if I didn't make it pretty as well mm -hmm. you know so mm -hmm. whenever people say it's like they're so pretty I was like 
that's funny it wasn't like intentional that that was like my goal to make him pretty but it was just like out of respect for it you know it's it's, gotta look good too yeah so and you know it evolved through the years and yeah. But um, back to going to uh, joining the police um, department at a later age, and this was one of the things I was asking you earlier, like you seem to have started a few things kind of later in life, and I think it's great. I think it's a great example for people to who think that, you know, sometimes people give up. Like, oh, I'm too, I hate it when I hear people say, like, I'm too old for that. Like, you just said, get comfortable in what you do. Yeah, like, said who? Who's to say you're too old for anything other than yourself? You know, you're, you're limiting yourself. Um, so I was just loving talking to you about it because I'm going through a major change myself. And when I say that, it's not like leaving it. It's just changing the focus. You got to like change it up. You, new paint. Yeah. New coat of paint. Exactly. New hair. New hair. <laughs> <Can't> <laughs> Keep it that. fresh. Yeah. Um, it keeps life interesting. Yeah. And also your fire for what it is that you do more sustainable. So you now being a cop, I mean, yeah, you're not a full-time artist anymore. Right. But do you feel that when you go back into sculpting in between, like, do you feel like it, it changed the way... You were? I don't think so, but we'll see, you know. I haven't had a lot of studio time since. Yeah. Um, but I don't I don't see it doing that. I think the one thing that'll be major will be my time. I won't have a lot of downtime to go in the studio, but it'll just force me to be um better with my time when I am Mm. going in the studio. And honestly, Um, being a working artist for so long I could get in there and jam out Mm -hmm. work like that and not even think about it so that's really not a big deal like if I have some time I could do that and it wouldn't really affect it that much but doing something new you know I mean to me even as a working artist while, while I was making sculpture and doing my art shows and being in galleries I always and everybody's different. I know artists that make the same things over and over again. Yeah. A lot of painters that paint the same image. They yeah. just keep doing it. For me, I had to make everything had to be different. Yeah. I would do some similar things and theme, yeah, themes sort of, but for me, I couldn't keep reproducing things. Mm-hmm. I do say that I've made a lot of canoe paddles over the years. Right. But those are, you know, that's what it is. I'm making them, yeah. Like I've made many donuts. Supply and demand. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but when I'm but making, all different. right. And when I'm making original pieces, I want to make them all different. And, yeah. uh, you know, going into the police, it was something way different. It's like, yeah. okay, I'm going to go way outside my comfort level yeah. and do something totally different. But that's why I was. Uh, I'm kind of imagining, I have so many interests as well that don't necessarily go together with donuts or every other interest, but but I make it work. Like now with the podcast, I sneak in my karaoke <laughs> afterwards, you know, because why not? I love it. I enjoy it. And yeah, it's just, it's you've got just, a microphone. I got a microphone. So again, like, how do I bring all of my skills and interests into my life? Some people go through phases. Do you feel like you... The you know the the difference between art and martial arts well is yeah is I think so arts. like are, are they phases or more like now it's kind of commingling um, I think it's maybe somewhat like chapters mm. but at the same time you're just building on top of it so right. it's all there and yeah. all sort of relates and and provides more information for other things along yeah. the way. Hmm. Um, yeah, it's definitely different, though. So for, for like, obviously now you're, you're still in the academy. Mm-hmm. You're officially with the Maui Police Department. Yes. And how much longer until that's whatever? So I graduate in March. Isn't it fun to say you're going to graduate? I know. It's so <laughs> wild. I have people coming to my graduation. I'm like, what? <laughs> that is so crazy. But, uh, yeah, I, I graduated in March. I was hired in July. Yeah. Um, so I did an early hire at, at the station and mm. then Academy officially started, um, October 1st 
and it's like mm -hmm. a, a very intense academy. Like we're doing eight hours a day of mm -hmm. like intense, I mean, a lot of things compiled. Uh, and it's, well, obviously there's a lot of physical training. Yes. Um, but outside of physical training, what does it entail to um, join the Maui Police Department? I mean, there's there's a ton of things. I, yeah, mean, I mean, the the law. We did law yeah. for a month, you know, and it it was like the size of a Bible, and yeah. we're just every day in the classroom, you know, and doing exams, yeah. and because you have to know the law inside yeah. and out, because yeah, you're, like you're, you're saying, enforcing it. Yes, and you got to know <laughs> exactly. what you're talking about. Yeah, so, exactly. so they start you yes. off with that, and yeah. then we go from there, and you know, everything's sort of in blocks and. How do you think you've grown since joining or, you know, going to the academy? Because I'm just thinking, again, it's so different from thinking like, oh, I'm going to make a sculpture today. And it's when you're an artist and you're a creative, it's almost like, yeah, it's work, but it's fun. Right. Being in a And it, it has been fun, you know. Mm -hmm. um, again, I apply, I guess, my normal life of like me being an artist. I see myself as a problem solver. Yeah. Me being a martial artist, same thing. When I'm mm -hmm. doing jujitsu, I'm problem solving the person that I'm rolling with. Yeah. You know, we call it rolling when we're yeah. like sparring or whatever. Yeah. Um, so it's on the fly thinking. Being yeah. a police officer is the same thing. Yeah. You've got to think on the fly and you've got to make critical decisions on the fly. Yeah. And that, I really like the challenge of that. Yeah. So to me, that. It's kind of what I was already, I mean, it's obviously very different, but yeah. you have to have that mindset. Mindset, yeah. So um, speaking of mindset, what do you think, you know, especially we're adults? <laughs> uh, barely. <laughs> barely, yeah. I'll never <laughs> grow up. But, um, you know, what are, uh, what are things that you think you can share with the, not, I don't want to say youth, but like people who kind of want to get into either art or, or law enforcement, but also just starting something because I feel I'm going through the same thing where I feel like I'm going to start something on you. Um, I don't know necessarily all the steps to do that, but I have the, the balls, <laughs> you know, that's so like, I mean, I think that's, that's it right yeah. there. I mean, to me, the hardest thing to do is to step off the ledge. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. You can know it all. Yeah. You can know it all. How to run a business, yeah. how to make donuts, yeah. but until you step off the ledge and do it, yeah. it you, you have to do it. Love that. You have to do it. And yeah. that was always, I was never afraid of, I just knew I was going to go do this yeah. when I was an artist. I was like, I'm going to make it work. We're going to, and we yeah. worked as a team, me and my wife, mm -hmm. and you know, but that was it just going for it yeah. like okay we're just gonna do it and it worked out and same you know with this it's like okay I'm gonna apply yeah. I'm gonna put that in yeah. oh I'm gonna stop doing my other job my the yeah. other life I'm just gonna try this new one yeah. it's like I gotta step off that ledge yeah. and take that step yeah. and the ground's not that far yeah you know yeah. don't be scared yeah. and just do it you know because that's what it is so many people won't take that chance right. they aren't gonna they're comfortable doing what they're doing and they they are happy doing what they're doing but maybe there is that little bit in their mind like i want to i don't know though yeah i, I mean honestly, everybody's different in how they deal with I, well, solving it, problems right so right. not everybody feels comfortable with something that's that's so uh, unique and different to what they know. Right. You know, and I get it. I mean, I like the adventure in general in life, you know, so I kind of like the unknown because it makes me, it's exciting. It's exciting. I think it's exciting. Yeah, because it's scary. Yeah. But it's like also, scary. it's, it's like exciting. Cool. Why do we watch scary movies? Because we like I to be excited, enjoy. you know? Yeah. So it's like, I told you before, it's like, oh, if you see me doing something naughty, please, don't give me a ticket, just <laughs> leave me the handcuffs. All right. All right. <laughs> you know that was coming. <laughs> I, I've I heard always, it, I've heard it. I always ask you to bring uh -huh, the handcuffs. Uh -huh. <laughs> it was so funny yeah. that one time I was telling you that and there was other customers. And <laughs> they were like, like, oh, geez. What that? I was like, that's how I talk to my customers. Okay. <laughs> oh, geez. <laughs> Thank you for being a good sport. Uh -huh. But um, so, okay.
Okay, well, I, I don't want to keep you because you you start early these days. Like, oh you, boy, yeah, real you, early, real early, real early. Like, My bedtimes come real early yes. as well. I'm like, oh. <laughs> and even if I stay up late, yes. I still I get up early. Yeah, I'm like, I and it's so. probably nothing for you. I'm sure you're up real early too. Yeah, I have a lot of like um, behind the scenes work, and they're all so different. And I'm but it's, again, it makes it so fun. That's why I was so interested in talking to you because I feel like you're doing things that are different from all your other activities or interests, but it makes you you, right? And I think that at the end, you know, it's 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 what makes you so unique. Oh, we, we all, I, you know. I, I appreciate it. it. Um, uh, Maui, since you've been here in 20, uh, for 23 years or so, obviously this is home to you. And yes. I, what do you feel with with your gifts, with, with your talents, like what do you feel like you bring to the island? Uh, I mean, I think I know, but. I mean, if, the, if it's anything conscious in your mind that you feel like you honestly, I, I don't ever really think on that level about mm -hmm. what I do. But yeah. if I could step back and look at it, obviously, like helping people with yeah. jujitsu and enriching people's life with artwork, you yeah. know, yeah. like it was some of the greatest feelings when I make something that mm -hmm. I love. And obviously I created this because I wanted to make this. Yeah. And then someone says, I love that, yeah. I want that. It's I want to so give nice. you this amount of money yeah. for it. And I want you to send it all the way across the world to where I live. Yeah. Like, that's so amazing. That yeah. was some of the greatest feelings to yeah. get. And then like martial arts wise, when I teach someone and they start getting it and they start mm -hmm. applying it, mm -hmm. and then they go compete and they go win. It's yeah. like that, it's so oh, fulfilling. it's so yeah. cool. Or they, you, you see people, I've had people who um, maybe have been in situations where they aren't comfortable and they're not confident and mm. they've been bullied, they've been mm -hmm. beaten, they've been abused. Mm. They start training and all of a sudden they walk with their head held high. They make good decisions. I yeah. mean, so much of martial arts is making right choices too. Yeah. Like not being in the wrong place at the wrong mm -hmm. time. It's that's not. That's real self defense. It's, it's when you're that's being smart that's at. it. Be smart, you know. Um, that's really it, yeah. you know. Giving back like that, but no, I don't think about it that yeah, much. Yeah. I just like I mean, to do what I like to do. No. Any last words before I, I let you go and let you go to sleep mm, early? No. So you can go. Thanks for having me. Thank you so this much. This was amazing. Such a good sport and thanks for all your support. Oh, of course. The, the years, really. Of so course. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Have Thank you. <laughs> well, everybody, if you're watching on YouTube, I'll be back, I think, next week. But I've been really inconsistent lately. So just follow the Madam Donut channel on YouTube, Madame After Midnight on Instagram. And I'll see you next time. Aloha. Mm -hmm.